Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to my Happy Friday chat. Hi everyone, thanks for being here on this beautiful Friday. I hope it's beautiful where you are. It is here, it was supposed to rain all day, but uh, we got some sunshine outside. A little sticky still, but it's beautiful, especially when you're sitting in here looking outside. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great, great Friday, of course. We are celebrating Juneteenth today here in the United States. End of slavery, big day, big day. And um, so I, I, you know, been reading, been educating myself a lot on uh, racial injustices and reading a lot of great, great books. So uh, educating myself a little more on this this particular day. And of course, end of slavery back in 1865, even though it was two years after. Um, Mr. Lincoln signed the big declaration of independence, but um, one of the things that caught my, my, my eye, of course, was th the celebration itself in the black community is celebrated with barbecues and cookouts and things like that. And what is symbolic is uh, they serve some red foods and red drinks. And it's significant as it represents a symbol of in ingenuity and resilience and bondage so red drink so this is my goody sangria this is a uh, simple simple one of the easiest things to make is sangria because it doesn't really matter what you put in there as far as fruit and juices so i in i put in there whatever was in the house so in there i started with the fruit so i had a big juicy grapefruit i didn't have any oranges so you can replace that with oranges i had two apples and then i had some pineapple chunks that fresh pineapple that i had cut up in the fridge so i threw a cup of that in there and just a little bit of juice like a half a cup of juice and then um you chop it all up put it in a big pitcher and then you pour a bottle of red wine and a half a cup of brandy now i have to say i didn't have any brandy but i used bourbon paired with a little bit of uh juice so then that's why i added that half um a cup of half a cup of pineapple juice and then i actually added also a quarter cup of orange liqueur which i didn't have but i had pineapple liqueur so this is completely my version. I threw a, a few blueberries in there. So you want it to marinate for a good four hours overnight even because especially with the red wine, the fruit needs to kind of infuse into the wine and you want to use the sweetness of the fruit as your sweetener. A lot of recipes call for either simple syrup or sugar being put into your sangria. You really don't need that. If you just let the fruit marinate, it's going to be really delicious. So then when you're ready to serve it, I just pour two cans of sparkling water in there and you serve it over ice and it's refreshing. It's the perfect summer drink. Um, something that is a staple whenever I go to uh, Spain. We used to always go to Spain in the summertime uh, as a kid in living in Iceland. So Spain was uh, as, as much as popular for Icelanders to go to the beaches in Spain as Mexico is for Americans. <laughs> so I always kind of um, have kind of fun with that. So this, this is a staple. Having true uh, Spanish sangria on the beach is, is great, but I'm not there. So I'm just here in Minnesota having my little sangria. Cheers, everybody. So it's been a busy week really busy week as uh, if you watched last tuesday i announced the next sew along and so uh, make sure you check in on in the comments and tell me if you are watching if you're going to take part in this next sew along yeah not a quilt along so the sew along is something that i got completely pushed into by all of you because a lot of you wanted to make this bag which is my grab and go tote that I have right here. Now I'm gonna put the details of the sew along. So this will be just like a demo. So let's put that up on the screen. So this is a demo. We're gonna do it over two Tipsy Tuesday, Tuesdays starting in July. So you got some time to gather your supplies. Of course, uh, we had some kits and we had some coated fabric available on Tuesday and uh, it kind of disappeared real fast. I think of the last pieces of the coated fabrics sold today. But I want to give you some other options what you could use. 
some uh, we have a lot of bag makers in the crew and so they've been giving us some ideas of what to use so uh if you missed tuesday so this is like a gigantic bag so i'm when i this came out in my book it's in my book uh, fast and furious family older book it's from 2011 and so if you don't have it it is available we're getting we're actually getting really low stock on this i was so surprised because this is an older older book and i don't didn't think it was ever going to sell but we also have it as an ebook so uh, if we do run out there is the ebook version so quilt as you go it is a quilt as you go book and i've shared with you before that bag making is not my favorite thing i do do them and every once in a while kind of when i'm forced so i have included some of these patterns in my books now this one is was a favorite because it's so big it's great for hauling i haul my quilts i host i have you remember hauling stuff for quilt retreats i had one of these in the back of my trunk for costco runs so you can put it over your shoulder the handles are long long enough to put it over your shoulder i mean you could put a child in here really truly a big puppy kobe would fit in here and then it also has handles on the sides so one of the other reasons that i wanted to do this again is that when i wrote this pattern i used a product that uh, was called craft tax and nowadays we have this beautiful product uh, all these foam products interfacings that you can use and in particular i really loved working with soft and stable um, it's a buy any product and so we have links in the description of the video if if you're looking for that and so i've always wanted to make this with that and see what it would do because i felt like it would stand up so much better uh, with the foam than it did with the craft text so I'm kind of excited to take you through it. It is quilt as you go, coated on the bottom. That means I used a laminated fabric or coated fabric. Uh, this is a motor fabric. So it's really just cotton fabrics and it's been coated in this um, kind of like a laminate. So it, it's waterproof or you know water resistant. You can wipe it off, dirt wipes off easily. So you can set it down in any anything. Now, before, uh, I, you, you probably can't always get this coated fabric product, which is just a complete cotton, cotton fabric, but you can use um, oil cloth. So oil cloth, I made a couple of bags using oil cloth. The difference between a laminated fabric and an oil cloth is that the oil cloth doesn't have the fabric part on the inside. It has a really nice, glossy, sometimes glossy, um, kind of laminated side, and the other side doesn't have the fabric, but it really doesn't matter because you're just putting that next to the uh, foam or or whatever interfacing you want to use for this so that really doesn't matter other fabrics that would work well any kind of outdoor upholstery fabrics uh, something that wipes down you can also just treat your fabric with od coat which is a painted on like a water repellent or water resistance um, material i don't know if it, you can spray it on i haven't used it myself but i've heard from people that have done it successfully used it in bags and things like that so um, so don't worry even if we are out of this and you can't get your hands on that kind of fabric You can also of course just use regular quilting cottons anything you can use denim You can use um, any kind of canvas like fabric uh, Just just kind of have fun with it and then and then uh, I will let you know if I if I spot some coated fabrics anywhere Or if I hear of a quilt shop that has some but we sold out really fast so um, soft and stable also it's a, like i said a buy any product it's available in most quilt shops and also i have the link straight to uh, the buy any's website for that product you need a yard of it so it, it is i believe 56 inches wide so we need uh at least 30 well we need a yard so a half yard they package them in half yards too that's a little bit too narrow so we need the one yard so that's all you need it but if you can't find it in quilt shops like i said and by Annie's has it in their store and they were ready for all of our orders um, let me check in and see how many of you are joining me oh lots of people on that's great I thought everybody would be out enjoying um, the day Friday so uh, some of you are not a bag person they're skipping this one that's totally okay I told everybody too a little inside information that there will be a quilt along in August but I just kind of got forced into this one. Not a bag person either, but it'll be fun. It'll be fun, fun to see all those um, bags. And I, it's, it's one of those bags that you definitely will use. It's easy, quilt as you go, really easy. 
All right. Um, it's just the one size. So just one size for the bag. Um, we're just making it the bag big size. Okay. Um, great to have so shells here for the first time live. That's great. Finished her marina top today. That's awesome. And Marsha's going to participate in the so in the sew along. Ordered the book and Odi code and batting. Awesome. Great. Great. I love that you're excited. And some of you might be not. That's okay. <laughs> some of you I know are scared about bag making, but don't worry. This one is a simple one. I don't do anything hard. We're not putting any zippers in, no pockets. Of course, you can add that at all if you want, but uh, I'm not going to tell you how to do that. Oh, it's, it's much nicer than the big Ikea bag. Yeah, it's much nicer and much cuter. You can pick your fabrics and, and um, so yeah, it's, uh, the idea came from the Ikea bag because I had one that was falling apart and I was using it for a lot. And I'm like, I need to make one that's cuter. And so there was that. Um, Julie says, I can't believe I'm going to make a bag. I'm much better at sewing things that are flat. I am with you on that. I'm with you on that. But um, don't worry, this will be, this will be just fine. It'll be fun. So, um, great to see everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. I'm going to have a sip of my, uh, sangria. It's tasty. I thought you were going to toast with me. Oh, toast. Uh, oh, he's not going to come on camera for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he doesn't want to give it up because he's got an empty glass already. Mm -hmm. So that's the it's main reason. So hot. Yeah. So the other fabric requirements for the bag, uh, you will find everything. We put together a blog post on it if you want any more information. Um, so like I said, you need a need the the b bottom portion of the bag, which is either a coated fabric, oil cloth, anything you want to use, then a charm pack. Then you need a half yard for your binding and your handles, and then uh, a yard and a quarter for the lining of the bag. And then just the soft and stable. So simple, simple. Um, and the two dates for the sew along, it'll be kind of a demo type of situation. So I'm not going to like sew it with you throughout, but I'm going to give you lots of tips on the different steps going through it. So which are going to be really helpful for you. And so, uh, you can take, it's a plenty of time to get two weeks to make a whole bag. So that's, it's going to be easy. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right. Uh, what else we're we going to talk about? Oh, we did a lecture yesterday with a guild in Colorado, and that was really great. It was a guild from Boulder, Colorado, and we had a lecture around noon. So we were ready to go extra early because I am really bad at calculating uh, time zones, as you may have noticed before. So for right now at GE Designs, I am not allowed to calculate time zones. So I thought, so since they were in mountain time and we were going to start the lecture at 11.30, I thought to myself, oh, I need to be ready at 10.30. So Mr. Honey Producer was ready even before that, 9.30, ready to go. And then nothing happened at 10.30. And I started thinking, whoops, wait, <laughs> let me calculate this again. Oh, it was actually 12.30. <laughs> so we were ready, really, really ready. And it went really well. Uh, everything worked out technology wise so I'm excited for next week we have three dates lined up for anybody can sign up for the lecture and um, lots of great feedback from the folks they loved the lecture lots to learn they had their notebooks taking notes so that was really good and um, not a whole lot of questions in the in the Q&A so maybe some of you joining me next week will ask some more questions I was ready I was ready for questions um, but if you are still thinking about it and have never used Zoom, I have a little tip for you. So if you go to the website and you click on those lectures and you click on the product descriptions and read it, on the bottom there's links to tutorials on how to use Zoom. So you can just click on those and watch them and see if you can kind of maybe familiarize yourself with it and possibly take a chance on, on, on joining us. So. Um, just take your time, watch the watch the little little tutorials, and you'll learn how to use Zoom. It's really, really simple. It really is. So, and we'll help you through it. You also, when you sign up, you get a PDF kind of outlining everything and, and taking you through everything you need to do. So, it's all good. So, we have um, some spots left for all of the three 
three dates. And those of you, I got a lot of emails and comments and, and questions if there was going to be more dates because they couldn't, these days just couldn't work for them. Don't worry, we will schedule more. This was just, we wanted to kind of get it going and schedule those first three. Now we're gonna be gone in the first part of July, right after the 4th of July weekend. We're gonna go on a little trip. So um, it, we will definitely schedule more lectures end of July and then into August. So, and also opening myself up now for groups. So if you have a quilt guild that's looking for virtual lectures, uh, you can find all that information on my website under lectures and workshops. So that is cool. Any questions on the lectures? Any, anything coming through on, on um, YouTube? Oh, oh, great. Um, Ingrid is asking, can fabric to make a diaper work? I'm sure, I, um, I'm not sure if that stretches at all. So that would be my only concern if that's a stretchy fabric. I'm not sure. Um, I know like the cloth diapers, that's what my little grandbaby uses and that's kind of nice, but that, that might be, might be working well. Um, oh, Beth is joining us on Friday. That's great. Everybody's looking forward to that. That's awesome. That'll be fun. Um, mm -hmm. that's really great. Excited for the, Jan excited for the lectures and, um, Lisa's asking, what kind of RV are you taking? I don't know, 30 foot long, seven person. Yeah, not the big, big, biggest ones, but it's a bigger one, I think. Bigger one. Oh, Sydney's heading to Oregon that, that same week, hoping that Oregon has good weather. Yeah, they had their um, kind of cool week this week, and uh, they say it was going to warm up. Um, going forward. Yeah, so this is kind of their first full year in in um, in Oregon. So they I guess this happens every summer. They have a week of when it's really cold and then summer comes back um, Barbie mr. Barbecue hubby. I like that <laughs> Mr. Honey producer and mr. Barbecue hubby um, We were doing a little bit of organizing Amy came over today and we were organizing um, the uh shipping room and well mostly she was organizing <laughs> i should say and so i found some trying to make room for a new apparel so the t-shirts and stuff we found um some extra inventory of our three previous t-shirts so there's the two two shirts that were for our um stripology retreat and then our stripologist shirts and we have just kind of limited limited numbers of sizes and so we decided we're, with, I'm putting it on clearance. So they're all have been marked down. So the actual price has been marked $5 down. So now instead of $19.95, the t-shirts are $14.95. So if any of those sizes work for you, go snatch them up. So the, the two shirts that are from the previous um, uh, retreats, they have, one of them has the Gloria block on the front. And then the second one has the Lucy has the Lucy quilt on the front because those are the two with the retreat quilts that we made that did. And of course, I'm a stripologist is the black shirts. <laughs> He's having too much fun with that one. <laughs> so that's all there. Um, I wanted to also tell you if you're going to be placing orders this coming week, we're going to make a little bit of a test change for a week. And so if you are in the domestic US, you will see some flat rate shipping rates. So we're uh, just gonna test this for one week. If it works out good for us, we might stick with it. So there will be just flat rates uh, based on the weight of the package. And also we will be shipping everything in the domestic US with a two day FedEx. So you would get your packages even faster. And um, yeah, so we don't have to rely on some some things working perfectly all the time, which hasn't been, of course, with COVID. Um, I have to say USPS has been working well for most places, but there are still areas of the US where they're having issues and first class mail is not very fast. That is when it's one pattern, one or two patterns, it goes first class mail. If you choose first class mail, it's taking, it's taking a while. So I'm excited to um, 
see the changes of course we'll still offer that for the lightest packages but uh, like the bundles and some of the rulers so that'll all be coming to you in two days i'm excited about that so um and somebody said faster you're fast already yeah i think we're fast already because we try and get all of our orders out the next day now some of you may have noticed if you ordered on tuesday the uh coated if you ordered the coated um teal fabric the polka dot teal this one we didn't have it yet and we don't have it until tomorrow so we're not shipping that until monday so if you notice that your package hasn't been shipped that's why we just d decided to wait until we got this we were hoping it would come thursday it didn't and then we i was watching for today and it's not coming until tomorrow so we will have it all cut up and ready to go on monday um so i have a few more updates on stuff any do we have any questions on anything um yeah that's great Oh, that's hot in Shreveport, Louisiana, upper 90s and humid all week. It was, it was hot here too. It's so funny how we get really um, like Florida weather in, in the summer sometimes. And it's because of all our lakes here up in Minnesota. Now we do get the 30 below in the winter though. Are we gonna, we're gonna be getting new ones, yes. So a new design, new types of shirts, but I'm a, Strabolo I'm a Strabologist shirt. We we're gonna be getting new Strabologist shirt, shirts, yes can't talk anymore i've only had two sips and you have finished yours <laughs> he's just having too much fun over there um okay so i wanted to give you some updates on the fabric um if you signed up for any of the out of stock notifications you might have noticed that prismachrome is back in stock stratosphere is back in stock all the peppered cottons and the strippy forest kits. Yes, we got some of the fabric. So we decided to list some, some of the kits today. And I see that they were just disappearing really fast, but don't worry, we are getting more, even more of the fabric. So we will have more. We just, I just wanted to kind of get those out um, while we had it. So more is coming, hopefully uh, end of next week. And we'll keep trying to get more until, until we can't get any more. Um, and then we have more coming this week. So more Tahoe Ski Week bundles are coming. They're actually on their way, probably arriving uh, Monday. We have uh, ge uh, Geometry is coming. And then also the Tahoe Ski Week charm packs. So that, that's coming. We have Heartland Holiday and uh, Black, White and Red Hot coming. Uh, that should be here kind of mid mid next week I hope and then I just got a notification that we have some two new Christmas lines coming from Louis and Irene they are gorgeous I can't wait to show it to you um, Louis and Irene is a company based in you in the UK and they just make really beautiful fabrics really kind of whimsical without being um, uh, without being too cutesy I just love their sense of color deep rich colors so the camping panel we will not be able to get back because that one came out quite a while ago. Quite a while ago. We had it um, last last fall. Yeah. So we it's it's that's long gone unfortunately. We won't have that one back, but we always get similar things. Um, and now and then we have a couple of new things. We got I had showed you I think last week during Facebook Friday. I showed you uh, Naughty and Nice, which is on, I told you it was on the way. So this is a fabric line by Basic Gray. It's a Christmas line. So we got the charm packs in. We will be getting the layer cakes. I just uh, am also gonna wait on, cause with the layer cakes, I'm gonna show you, I have one, but we don't have them in the store yet. So with the layer cakes, I actually made a quilt using this. And it is, um, I used it, it's gonna be in the new book. And, but I used a background fabric, which is um, this print here. And then I used a border fabric, which is in here. It's beautiful. It's actually this print, but just with a kind of taupey gray background. Now I can't find it. It's of course in the middle here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I can't find it. <laughs> but it's, in, it's this print, but with a taupey background. So, oh, right here, this one. 
Um, so I'm getting yardage of those two. So I'm gonna list the layer cakes once I have the yardage too. So you'll be able to buy um, the layer cake and if you wanted to get background, you could buy that by the yard and also the uh, border fabric. If you wanted to really wait for what's coming in the book. But the, the charms are in the store. And then we have a brand new bundle. Uh, what I told you, so a lot of you were waiting for more of the Shimo layer cakes and charm packs, which were all gone, but I was able to find some yardage. So we have a bundle of these now. So this is the beautiful um, Shibori style fabrics, all in blues. And so I'm just gonna show you uh, the different prints. So just a variety of blues and just I love that texture, the deep indigo colors uh, paired with a little bit of the lighter blues. So we just got that in and got it packaged. So that's in the store right now. But lots of fun stuff coming. And of course, I'm always trying to up my orders so that we don't run out of stuff so fast. So I'm working on it. It just takes time. Um, if those of you that don't know, you have to order fabric with such an advance. You have to order sometimes six, six months out. And um, so to get more of something is, is really hard. But isn't this pretty? Really pretty. And you can pair it with a background. So just use the blues and then a background for so many patterns. Um, it was just, just very versatile fabric. I don't have Shimo as yardage. So that's just the half yard bundles um, like this. So uh, no, not yardage. When we only sell by the yard. So the uh, other, so what we do is sell by the yard. Um, we prepackage it in one yard packs because we just don't have the capacity to cut to order. And so this is a new line I took in. It's called Canvas and it's by Northcott. And the texture, it's, it's called canvas because it's like a, uh, a painter's canvas texture. So it reminds me of grunge a little bit, but I love um, that this is more like a solid, um, but with just a, so a single color texture. So you know grunge sometimes has other colors in it, but this is more like a single color texture. So this is a basic that we will be keeping. And so basics are, are great because you can keep reordering them. And so um, this is a new line and we'll be adding colors to it and keeping it in stock. And so what's great too, we mark um, on the back, we, we put the, the, color name, um, the color name and the number. So if you, you know, need to order more or you just keep, make, make sure you keep them like this and then you keep this and then you can easily reorder the same thing over and over. So that's kind of what we do with our one yards. We try and have it full of basics that we can reorder. Now sometimes we'll have yardage of something that's coordinating with a certain thing. So, um, so that some of those we sometimes can't get back, but trying to rotate it and have fun with it, but giving you lots of options for accent colors and bindings and borders and things like that especially backgrounds, different kind of backgrounds, because a lot of my patterns, of course, as you know, work with a scrappy layer cake or strips or whatever, and then you need maybe a background for it. When is the new book coming? <laughs> I'm working on it, I'm working on it. I got another quilt um, done and got my border fabric so I can get that off to the quilter. And I actually pieced a really fast quilt last night, not going in the book. This I'm gonna share with you sooner than that. I shared with you about, what, two weeks ago when you, I showed you the flannel that's coming in July. It's coming end of July. So I would say, yeah, towards the end of July. And with fabric shipments being delayed a little bit, I would maybe say July, August. Um, Will, you make Kobe a dog bed? Will I make Kobe a dog bed? Well, I'll do the flat part, but I don't, uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> It's like when I have to think about a three-dimensional thing, then I'm like, mm, I don't know. Um, he's got quilts. He, he loves, he's actually laying, he was laying on this bag. Where is he now? What's the great background fabric on the quilt over your legs? Oh, the great background fabric. This was a fabric by um, Adorn It, and it was called Burnish. And we had it for a while in the store, but uh, then weren't able to get any more. Um, I really loved it also because it had a great texture and a great, um, kind of similar to the canvas. So a really great texture without having multiple colors in it. 
But I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of this uh, flannel quilt that I make, made, which will be a pattern. I'm just going to show you just this, um, just this little thingy. So big pieces, which is what you want with flannel. But then I also pieced the back. And I told you that um, I was going to show you how to use the sheep. So uh, this is actually going to be such a perfect uh, project because the quilt comes together from uh, this size from a bundle. And then you have like three or four fat quarters left from the bundle that you can use along with three yards of the sheep and um, piece it together with the other fabrics. So I'm going to show you uh, when this comes, I'm going to show you how it's, how I pieced it. So you'll get instruction how to piece it, piece the back like I did if you want to utilize some of the sheep. And then this is going to be a really fast, fun, um, cozy flannel quilt. Perfect for guys, very masculine, especially with these colors, monochromatic. Or if you have um, young, young couples that love more graphic, more modern, more simplified these this kind of like farmhouse uh, look and um, so that magnolia look this is kind of really that that those plaids and everything um, and in that uh, somebody's asking how many of the naughty layer cakes would be required for my quilt I only used one because I used a back um, a background but that's for the lap size so if you wanted to make a big one, you might need a couple. Do you need to use flannel for the back of the quilt? No, you don't need to. Uh, somebody asked if you want need to use flannel for the back of the quilt. You don't at all. Now, I when I make a flannel quilt, I like the back to be flannel too. Uh, but I have done quilts with a regular cotton front and a flannel backing. I love doing that. If I don't um, have minky but still want it kind of cozy, I put flannel on a lot of backs. And it's fine to mix them up. Uh, flannel may shrink a little more than cotton fabrics, but for me, if I buy good quality flannel from quilt shop quality flannel, it really isn't that much. And not not that it shows a difference at all. Do you have a waiting list for the sheep and fabric? I don't have a waiting list yet. So that's another thing we are working on with the tech department on setting that up on the website, how we do pre-orders. And so once we are ready with that, we will offer that on the website. So pre-orders will work certain ways um, where you can buy a bundle and um, I'll explain all that when we're ready to roll it up. But we're working on it. The, there's all kinds of issues like um, collecting the payment uh, and then how are you going to ship it if somebody orders it and orders something else with it because it's not going to ship together. It's it, There's all kinds of things. How are we going to organize them and keep them together and um, so there's going to be some great benefits to being able to pre-order certain things, spe specifically will be um, with the bundles. So if we know there's a fabric bundle coming out, I've gotten a lot of questions on the Tula Pink one coming, Allison Glass coming, all kinds of stuff. So there's, um, and I know there's going to be interest in more of the Moda things um, coming out, sheep fabric. <laughs> so. Do I sell uh, 108 white fabric? I do not at this time. We just don't have the space to do that here um, while we're still in our house. But um, so I don't. I don't sell the extra wide backs. Lots of stores do though. Quilt shops do. Do you wash your flannel? Do, uh, do I? <laughs> he can't speak anymore. He's after his one full sangria. <laughs> He asked, uh, somebody asked, he didn't ask, Nancy. do you wash, Nancy asked, do you wash your flannel? I don't pre-wash, so that's why I like to put flannel on the back and, you know, same type of fabric or same quality, and then I wash my quilt after I make it, before I gift it, so that's that's how I do things. I don't pre-wash, I like, I like to sew with them uh, without washing. Any other questions, Mr. Producer, any chance that Sarah pattern could be made as a PDF? Any chance that the Sarah pattern could be made as a PDF? Unfortunately, I am not the publisher of that pattern. That is published by Cutloose Press, which is um, connected to the Creative Grids rulers. So I always design a, a Cutloose Press pattern to go with the rulers. 
And so I have no rights to uh, publish it as a PDF, unfortunately. So it's only as uh, a printed one at this time. <laughs> That's a good one. Does Mr. Honey Producer have a sangria slur? <laughs> I think he does, kind of. He had a hard time saying flannel. that word, flannel. <laughs> um, but do you have a winner for us? We have to choose a live winner. Yeah, we He's ready. Let's see how our winner is. Our winner for the $25 gift card is Faye Doolittle. Congratulations. We will be contacting you if you are watching. Hopefully you are because we picked it live, um, send us a message or an email to Gudrun at GE Quilt Designs and we will get you your prize. So if you, um, any more questions? We are just zooming through what we're gonna talk about today. Um, do I have any patterns in my books named Faith? No, I don't, I don't have that yet. Um, I don't, I didn't say, was Svana posting some comments? Svana is my daughter. <laughs> we missed her comments. Oh, hi, oh, hi Svana. <laughs> uh, Debbie says Mr. Honey needs uh, another sangria. Well, we got a pit. I made a picture, so we've got, um, yeah, Dion says, is Svana your daughter? She's, Svana's my daughter. She's the one that organizes how the fabrics go into the bags and the bundles. She's, she heads up the folding department, make sure these are folded right and everything. And so she's, and she fills orders sometimes as well and needs to help up with that. So she does a lot. She does a lot. She's doing good. We're going to miss her when she goes back to college in August. What's the name of the flannel line? This is a Primitive Gatherings line, uh, Farmhouse Flannels 2, I believe. Can we go over the dates at the end? Uh, can we go over the dates? Not be having Tipsy Tuesday. Oh, no Tipsy Tuesday. So we, uh, yes, I can absolutely tell you that. So there'll be no Tipsy on um, July 7th or the 14th. However, we may have a, a Happy Friday on July 10th on the road from Oregon. Do you need to strip all of your books, all of your books to take your online lecture? You don't need any book for the lecture. That's just a, a presentation. I show you lots of quilts. I show you techniques from a lot of the books and the, and the patterns. So just as inspiration, talk about my story, uh, how I got from Iceland to the US, how I got started in quilting a little bit, and then um, kind of just take you through my techniques and my philosophy behind my collection or my stash and things like that. So it's, it's an inspirational lecture. You learn lots um, and then take notes and things like that. And you get to see the quilts up close. Do you need any more Cosmo Pink bundles? Uh, getting any more, oh, I re, yes, we, I just put in more orders for Cosmo and I, I don't know if we can, are able to get it. Cosmo and Morning Glory also um, reordered but we never know until we get a shipping notification if it actually comes or not. Um, so, okay. Oh, Melanie says she has a friend that has two daughters. One is named Hope and the other is Faith. I thought I might make a quilt for her daughters. Oh, we have Hope, no Faith yet, but that's, that would be a good one for sure. Um, oh, Svana does a great job. Check it out, Svana. <laughs> whoop, whoop. That's great. Um, beautiful bundle packaging. That is true. I couldn't live without these kids right now, especially now that I'm using them for labor. <laughs> couldn't live without them any day, but you know, of course, um, they really are helping out. But is that it for us today? Time to go and, uh, enjoy the rest of your Friday. Now we will be here next week. July, June 23rd for Tipsy Tuesday, 7 p.m. Central Time. And of course, if you are signed up for a lecture for Tuesday, I'll see you earlier in the day. And then um, the next Facebook Friday, of course, will be here at 3 p.m. But those of you out there, 
that will be celebrating Father's Day. Yeah, I see you. I see you guys watching too. You, you're probably lurking, don't want to say much, but I know you're there. Um, you're, please start commenting. We know uh, some of our male, male crew members and watchers on, and on YouTube. And then a lot of husbands watching over your wife's shoulders, right? Or at least hearing me. So I just wanted to take this opportunity and wish you a happy, happy Father's Day. Um, enjoy the day. Be pampered. Uh, happy Father's Day to Mr. Honey Producer. Thank you, thank you. Kobe is going to be giving him some great back rubs and uh, taking him for walks and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Making sure he gets his exercise throwing the tennis ball. So that's it for us today. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Happy Father's Day. Happy Juneteenth. And cheers, everybody. See you next week. Mm -hmm.